How many walk-in tubs have you bought? None? <laughs> Maybe you'll only buy one. But let me tell you something. The, the salesman that's coming into your home to try to sell you a walk-in bathtub is a professional. They do this four, five, six days a week, two, three, four times a day. They're very practiced and they know exactly what they're doing. And they have one objective. And that objective is to sell you a walk-in tub at the highest price possible. They're there to make money for themselves and the company, and they're not there to necessarily do what's best for you. So you need to be prepared to protect yourself. And today, I'm going to share with you a few of the actual closing tactics they may try to use to get you to buy at the last minute. They're going to put you through five no's, right? And I want you to be prepared for that. One of the techniques that's that's been around for a long time, and we've been doing this for almost 20 years, and this was uh, really pretty popular in the early days, and, and it's very likely that a lot of these salesmen will still be using some of these tactics, right? Um, one of the things is these companies manage their salespeople, and they train them, and they compare them to each other in a kind of a competitive environment, and they like closing ratios. You know, which one, who, who's closing the most people? and who's closing them at the highest price. And then there's also a stick factor, meaning that they'll measure how many people get cancellations. Um, that's an indication that they're manipulating and high pressuring people, and when they have time to think about it, they cancel the contract. Um, but these techniques, um, they've been using them for years. And one of the most common was uh, the show home close. In other words, they'll get you down to the point They've got you past the 30-day number. Now they're trying to drill you down and give you a price you just cannot resist in order to close you tonight. What they used to do is say, um, I tell you what, Ms. Jones, I, I've, I've got you all the way down to $19,000. I can see you really need this and you want it, and I'm trying to do everything I can help you. And, and uh, as a manager, I have the ability to uh, create what's called show homes. So if you would agree to let us take before and after pictures, you'll let us put a yard sign out in the yard during um, the project, um, I can give you another $1,000 discount because we'll be able to use that for our marketing and advertising purposes. At $18,000, are, are we ready to go? Another one that you really need to be careful of is the financing close. And a lot of these companies actually start with financing come-ons. They'll, they'll put 0%, 48 months, no payment. They'll put that in their ads and everything. Um, but when it gets down to the point that they're trying to close you, they're going to sell you on the payments. Or they're going to sell you on the free money. And I'm just telling you, as a lawyer, these loans are very, very um important and they're complicated and you need to be very careful before you enter into any financing agreement and that you don't fully understand all the terms and conditions. But let me just say, okay, banks do not give money away. Doesn't happen, right? When somebody starts offering you 0% financing and no payments for X number of months or whatever the heck it is, and they're going to try to close you with 0%, how can you say no to that? I mean, you're using other people's money. Let's take advantage of this to get this done today, right? Well, the reality is the money that the banks charge, these 0% programs, that money's packed into the price you're paying. And, and you need to be very careful because a lot of these 0% programs at the end have, have a landmine. And that is, you either pay the loan off at the end of that period, or it reclocks all the way back to, to the beginning, and they add the interest back in, and it's at a default rate. Um, so you want to be very, very careful. And I'm not saying every loan product is like that, but quite a few of them are. You need to be very careful about that. Uh, but just remember... That money is packed into the price they're charging you, and if they start promoting um, uh, financing to close you, your next question is, okay, if I take financing, you, you've got to pay for that, right? So what's my cash price? What if I pay you cash without it? And I'll just tell you, uh, 3%, a credit card costs us about 3%, so there are a little variance uh, in what different card companies charge. And if I've got some, I've priced somebody on the basis of them using a credit card and they suggest, you know, I want to pay cash, uh, 
what legitimate company wouldn't say, well, sure, I, I can give you a 3% discount because it's legitimate. I mean, it really relates to money that's changing hands one way or the other, okay? So just remember, banks don't give money away. Another technique that some of these salesmen will use is, is what I call the big order close. They'll think, they'll think of an excuse to close you as a basis for adding more discounts to giving you a better price. So again, in this example, I'm going to say they've, they've got you down to $19,000 and they're sticking up and they're trying to close you tonight for $19,000. Let's say their par is $18,000, right? So they may do something like the big order closes, which is where they go, you know, Ms. Jones, I, I can see you guys really want this. I'm so excited for you guys to have it. I want to try to make it happen. And, you know, I, I just realized something. You know, we got a, we got a huge order from a, an assisted living community today. They're, they're actually ordering like 20 tubs. I don't know. But it's a large number. And, of course, they get volume discounting. And if I can take your contract tonight, I can put it with their order. And that way I can offer you the same discounting that they're getting based on the fact that they ordered a high volume. But I've got to take your contract tonight and I've got to be able to put it in when that order goes in tomorrow. One that was really popular uh, in the used car field, uh, or not even used cars, just the car industry for a long time, uh, but is really popular with in-home salespeople too, uh, it's the old call the boss close. And the idea is they'll get you down to 19000 They're trying to get you excited. They've, they're trying to go for that do or die point. Uh, and again, let's say their par is 18000 So they got $1,000 to work with and they're trying to motivate you. And, and they will say, look, Ms. Jones, I know you really want this. I know you like it. Same sort of rhetoric, right? Reclose you. Um, let me call my boss and see if I can get something worked out. See if I can talk him into giving us a, a, some extra pricing. And they'll go off and they'll act like they're calling on their phone. They may be calling their girlfriend or, or listening to voicemails or nothing at all, right? Um, just understand it's a fake call one way or the other. And then they're going to come back and they're going to play it one way or the other. Oh, I've got great news. Oh, you're not going to believe it. He agreed that I could take an extra $1,000 off if, you, if, if, if you're ready to make a decision tonight. That puts us at $18,000. That's amazing. That's a great price. And they'll start writing you up. Or they'll play it the other way, and they'll say, I, c I couldn't reach my boss. I'm sorry. I'm not going to be able to, to make that happen for you. I was so excited about, you know, I can see how much you want this. And I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm going to do it anyway, right? Uh, don't, you know, beg for forgiveness rather than ask for permission. I, I'm probably going to get fired for this, but but I can see you really want it. I want you guys to have I, I I'm going to go ahead and take that extra $1,000 off. That puts you at $18,000, and they'll start writing you up, okay? So just be aware of the old call the boss uh, tactic. It's, it's not real. It's not a real call. Um, some people will use what I call the NDA close, the non-disclosure agreement. They'll say, look, $19,000 is really, the, that's the lowest I can go, um, but again, I really want to make this happen for you. And I, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and let you have it for $18,000. That's pretty exciting, right? That, that, now, that makes you really happy, doesn't it? So I'm going to let you have it for $18,000, but, but I'm going to have to sign, have you sign a non-disclosure agreement. If, if your neighbors and anybody ever heard that, that I allowed you to have this at, at the price I'm giving it to you, um, they're going to want the same price and we wouldn't be able to do it. So you're going to have to sign a non-disclosure agreement, but I can get it to you for $18,000 if you'll agree to do that. Well, first of all, I mean, that's not true. <laughs> okay. But secondly, even if it were true, what does that mean they're doing to your neighbors? Right? Remember, they started you at 30000 and they came down. Does that, does that mean they're going to be trying to sell their neighbors at $30,000 and twenty-eight dollars or twenty-three dollars or whatever the heck it is? which is true, but it isn't something that is confidential and, sh and should require a non-disclosure agreement. It, they're just manipulating. It's a manipulation process. Another one is called the uh, paper close or the three-day close. They've got you there. You're not moving. You're not going to close. You're stuck. And, and as a last-ditch effort, 
um, a lot of times they'll try this tactic and it goes something like this is look I'm, I'm just so sorry I've done the best I can do with you guys and I know you want it and and I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I can can help you make this happen it's a big decision I know you guys want to think about it a little bit I'll tell you what I'll do as a special favor for you um, I'm just let's write it up you sign the contract you go ahead and give me a check I'm gonna hold those in my briefcase and I'm not gonna deposit your check and I can give you you know what I'm gonna give you three days I'm gonna give you three days you just think about it if you change your mind you call me within three days I'll tear the check and the contract up no harm no foul how's that does that make you feel good what are they doing they're trying to build their ego they're trying to build their value in your eyes and that you're going above and beyond to do this special favor to help them out to give them time right the reality is that's BS it's not true it's a law it's called the three-day rider rescission law it's in every contract anybody that comes in your home and sells you something uh, uh, in the living room you know one call closed while you're there the law requires that that you be provided with three days to cancel that contract kind of a cool down period so if you think about it and you change your mind the law protects the consumer in, in, in that way it's not something special that they're doing for you okay so in another video I'm gonna talk more in detail about the difference between persuasion and manipulation persuasion is legitimate ethical information and knowledge that's shared I'll give you an example I have a lady that I've been working with she's in Texas and she was absolutely committed she wanted a lay down tub she wanted like a regular traditional bathtub and I know that's not going to serve her rest of life and so I either had to figure out how to educate and ethically persuade her or know in my heart that she was buying something that was not going to serve her rest of life the day would come when she would not be able to get up and get out of that tub you follow me so I, I used my passion my honesty my knowledge and everything I could to help her come to the point that she made the right decision for her persuasion it's ethical there's nothing wrong with it manipulation are the tactics that we've been talking about and that's where I manipulate you I, I do and say things to move you to a decision that serves me not you makes money for me and the company doesn't necessarily provide what's best for you and there are psychological tricks and tips that are used that's what we'll talk about in, in the manipulation versus persuasion video okay that's it I love you all please subscribe click share this I'd love to hear your comments about if you've had an in-home salesman a walk-in tub salesman what did they go through any of these gimmicks and tricks with you how did you feel about it how did you manage it or did you have a positive experience let's not forget the fact that it's possible that you had a very professional ethical salesperson in there who knew walk-in tubs and knew how to help you make the right decision okay I love you all hang in there